Now, the European Union has agreed on legislation to govern the use of artificial intelligence. The deal includes limits on facial recognition technology and restrictions on using AI to manipulate human behavior. The EU says the future legal framework for AI will include tough penalties for companies breaking the rules, but will not stifle development of the industry in Europe. It follows years of discussions among member states and lawmakers in the European Parliament. We had one objective, to deliver a legislation that would ensure that the ecosystem of AI in Europe would develop with a human-centric approach respecting fundamental rights and the European values. This is really something that um, uh, is much more, I believe, than a whole book. It's a, a launch pad for the European startups and also researchers to, to lead the global race for what our fellow citizens want, a trustworthy AI. For more on this, let's bring in our correspondent in Brussels, Bernd Rieget. Hello, Bernd. Uh, why did the EU decide that this law was needed? Well, the EU felt it is about high time to regulate and the EU wants to be the first uh, in the world, the first big regional uh, business area to regulate uh, artificial intelligence. Neither the US nor Asian markets have this regulation and in this way the EU wants to set the world standards for the um, whole industry and the EU also felt that it is a high time to do this now because there are some dangers uh, deriving from artificial intelligence um, and the EU sees itself as a, as a, at, the, at the forefront of a revolution actually in business because AI will have impact on every field of daily life in the future. Mm. The future is quite tricky when you think about AI, isn't it? Walk us through some of the measures that will be put in place and, and what they will mean for people and companies in the EU. The EU will divide uh, AI applications into four risk classes. Some of them will be completely forbidden, like facial recognition in, on, a, on a mass scale. There are some exemptions for military and, and uh, law enforcement, and also uh, behavioral uh, control and the control of your thoughts. That will be also banned. Uh, but uh, high risk applications, for example, in self driving cars, uh, will be allowed in the EU. But they have to be certified, uh, the technique has to be open so that everybody can see how that works. Uh, and normal, I, I would call it like chat GBT on a medium risk level, uh, that can be uh, in the EU without any restrictions, but it has to be documented how this thing works and everybody has to know that he is dealing with AI, that he's not talking to a human. This is one of the essential measures in the whole legislation. You as a consumer, shall always decide, do I want to talk to a machine? Uh, I have to know that it's not human. Um, this is the, the basic principle, and, but there are also some uh, AI applications that will be not regulated. For example, audio uh, and video altering um, uh, programs uh, that mm. make these uh, well-known deep fakes. These are not regulated. They don't pose uh, a high risk uh, in the view of the EU. Okay. What has the reaction been so far? I assume quite mixed, right? Well, there are positive and negative reactions on both sides of the aisle, if you will. The business lobby is saying this is far too much. It's too far because uh, it's overregulation. It will hamper uh, competition. It will prevent startups from coming up with new solutions. Some companies might even leave Europe to go to the United States or Asia to develop their applications there. On the other hand, uh, consumer protection groups say this is not far enough because the data are not protected very well and there are some mm. uh, AI uh, applications, for example, in toys that are not regulated that could attack uh, the thoughts and the behavior of our kids. So both sides are not really um, mm. satisfied. That shows that they somehow reached a balance. Okay. Bernd Rieget in Brussels. Thank you.